Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe to have a fun game with your brother and your boyfriend next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, a mutant so powerful she was able to get into the MCU over four years before they could actually use the X-Men. Also, she 1v1 Thanos a little bit, but navigating corporate IP laws is some serious magic. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need chaos. Glorious chaos, breaking the universe down and making it your own chaos. Next, we'll get some abjuration magic, in case someone doesn't like us poking holes in their reality. Finally, we'll make sure that our magic is ingrained in our DNA, with ways to make things work out for us a little bit better, even when we're out of spell slots. Oh yeah, this is a caster build, if that wasn't clear. Before we get started, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Surfshark is such a powerful little tool that encrypts your data and keeps you safe while you surf the web. But my favorite feature is letting my computer travel all around the world so I can watch Netflix in other countries. If you don't know, due to licensing rights, different countries have different stuff on their Netflix. So if I'm in the US and I want to watch Avatar, I can use Surfshark to make myself an Englishman and binge it while I'm stuck in quarantine. It's simple to use and install on your computer, phone, or browser. Pelt, you can probably make it run on your toaster. This is the first sponsorship we've had on the channel, so you know I wouldn't be pitching you something unless I had tried it out myself, and I absolutely love it. I also made sure to get you folks a killer deal with one month free and 83% off if you use the link in the description when you sign up. If you've been curious about trying out a VPN while on lockdown, Surfshark is the best in the business and using this link will really help my channel. So check it out, keep your information safe, and travel the world from the comfort of your home. Now back to the video. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook, but I'm going to recommend rolling for this one. It's really more in character to be chaotic. Charisma will be number one. Your accent is a little weird, but you're pulling that magic right out of your soul, not out of a book. Constitution. Next, your powers require some serious toughness to maintain. Dexterity after that, you've trained with Black Widow and Captain America. They're going to make sure that you are nimble. Follow that up with intelligence. You studied at Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters or Javier's School for Talented Teens if you're from a universe that doesn't have the rights to that yet. Strength is a little low, but you're you're in pretty good shape and we're gonna dump wisdom things can get a little out of control when you get out of control which happens pretty frequently now we have a rule about mutants on this channel mutants cannot be humans and wanda is a mutant maybe not in the mcu but uh, I just, I don't, I don't want to use human. And so we're going to be using a half elf. You'll get plus two charisma and plus one in two other stats of your choice. Dexterity and constitution would be my picks. You get 60 feet of dark vision. Your fey ancestry gives you advantage on saves against being charmed. And you can't be put to sleep by magic. Magneto's daughter is not going to be bamboozled by some conjurer of cheap tricks. Wait, wrong Ian McKellen character. How have I not done Gandalf or Magneto yet? Anyway, half-elves get more skills than they know what to do with, grab acrobatics and sleight of hand, then take the haunted one background. For arcana and investigation, your life is an endless cycle of ups and downs, chaos is your brand. Speaking of, we'll kick things off as a sorcerer. Letting us grab two skills from the sorcerer list, intimidation and persuasion will be good for interacting with your enemies and your enemies that are now your buddies. You get to pick a subclass right away, and for the full chaotic feel, choose wild magic as your option, which means that you were born with uncontrolled reality warping magic pumping through your veins. You get wild magic surge, which means that after you cast a spell of first level or higher, your DM can have you roll a d20. On a one, you go to the wild magic table. With that, you roll a d100 and something crazy is gonna happen there's a chart in the player's handbook that will tell you what happens it could give you resistance to damage summon a unicorn turn you into a potted plant all good things because they're all fun so dms have your player roll that chaos die every time they can hell you could even use brennan lee mulligan's homebrew rule from the unsleeping city where every time you roll the chaos die the likelihood for a surge increases by one but since that is a homebrew rule don't feel like you have to use it for something that's always helpful, Tides of Chaos lets you give yourself advantage on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw once per long rest, and it recharges when you get a surge going. We'll get some more reality warping magic in a second, but right now let's get some more spells. Firebolt is your first offensive cantrip. It's a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage on a hit. I'd love it if she could use Eldritch Blast, that feels more on brand for you, but Wanda's power is her own and she didn't barter for it, so we're not going to get a Warlock level. Mage Hand lets you get some minor telekinesis, letting you lift objects weighing 10 pounds or less. And and activate non-magical objects. Minor Illusion creates a visual illusion that fits into a five-foot cube or an audible illusion that can be as loud as a scream. Creatures can tell it's fake with an investigation check of eight plus your charisma modifier and proficiency bonus. Your charisma is nuts. Half-elves are pretty good sorcerers. Who would have guessed? Prestidigitation lets you do a bunch of tiny magical things like warming or cooling beverages, making little sounds, sensory effects, tiny stuff like that. But fun tiny stuff. 
for birthday parties. For first level spells, Chaos Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 plus 1d6 damage. What kind of damage? That's up to you. Kind of. There's a chart with a spell where 1 is acid, 2 is cold, 3 is fire, 4 is force, 5 is lightning, 6 is poison, 7 is psychic, and 8 is thunder. You pick one of those based off of the d8s you rolled for the damage. If you roll doubles, it bounces off and hits another creature, letting you roll again. If you roll doubles again, you can just keep going until you run out of creatures or don't roll doubles. No worries about going to jail unless you blow up an embassy with it. Mage armor will help you not die, making your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier for 8 hours, depending on your concentration. If you're not wearing armor, the heavy thing you wear is a weird helmet so you should be good second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you could use to recover spell slots or do some fancier stuff with thanks to the new class feature variants unearthed arcana imbuing touch turns a weapon magical if you want to give one of your allies some extra oomph empowered reserves lets you give yourself advantage on an ability check and sorcerer's fortitude lets you give yourself a d4 of temporary hp for each sorcery point you spend which can be really useful when you only get a d6 every time you level up for this level spell shield adds five to your ac as a reaction until your next turn's starts i'm picking up some abjurative stuff early because dying is sad especially when you don't get the really crazy stuff until the higher levels third level sorcerers get meta magic letting you augment your spells with sorcery points careful spell lets you pick a number of creatures equal to your charisma modifier to automatically succeed on the saving throws of spells you cast heightened spell lets you give a creature disadvantage on a saving throw against one of your spells i feel like these are the most controlled chaos options either holding it back to help your buddies or letting it all out to wreck your enemies to help your buddies wreck your enemies, hold person forces a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration or if they pass the save on their turn. This will let all your melee allies get advantage on their attack rolls and auto crit when they hit. So it should be popular with Thor, Natasha, Cap, Banner, Biffer, Bomber. Whoops, I started doing dwarves. Fourth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. Round up your constitution and charisma for more HP, better concentration saves, and better spells. For this level spell, Levitate lets you lift a creature or object weighing less than 500 pounds with the power of your soul if the creature doesn't want to be lifted they can make a constitution saving throw it's useful to take a melee fighter into the air and just sort of leave them there but there's no damage from falling as a result of the spell you can move the thing 20 feet with your bonus action on subsequent turns with an action within the spell's 60 foot range maybe you yeet your leader into a building i don't know fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells counter spell shuts down a spell of third level or lower automatically and can shut down higher level spells with a charisma check equal to 10 plus the spell's level Wanda shut down Thanos with five infinity stones for like a, for a little bit not forever sixth level wild magic sorcerers can bend luck letting you spend two sorcery points to affect an ability check saving throw or attack roll that a creature makes with a d4 you can go up or down shifting things in the favor of the heroes uh, unless you're not a hero yet then uh be bad for this level spell fly gives a creature a flying speed of 60 feet per round for 10 minutes depending on your concentration you might want to use this to get the hell out of a fight if you're not so great in the hp or ac department which you're not actually your hp is okay constitution modifiers really come in clutch but 15 ac isn't going to keep you safe for very long seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells confusion will mess the avengers up something fierce forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius failing that they are so bamboozled they'll have issues doing what they want to on their turns every turn they roll a d10 if they roll a one they use their movement to go in a random direction on a two through six they just do nothing on a seven through eight they attack a random creature within melee range and on a nine or ten they can act normally they re-roll the save on their turn but your charisma will be capped out next level so best of luck and you can make their luck worse bad news for them eight level sorcerers can get an ability score improvement i kind of telegraphed we'd be capping our charisma here so we'll cap our charisma here i'm a man of my word Grab Fear from the third level here. It's kind of similar to Confusion with a little more consistency. It forces a Wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cone coming from your person. Feeling that they are frightened and have to use their action to dash away from you for up to a minute depending on your concentration. You don't have to run away if you can just make everyone else run away. Ninth level Sorcerers can learn 5th level spells. Hold Monster is like Hold Person, but the person doesn't have to be a person. It can be a beast, fiend, construct, really anything you want. I think Thanos is technically a humanoid, but he's pushing it to its furthest dimensions so if your dm wants to call him something else this will have you covered 10th level sorcerers can learn another meta magic option unerring spell from the class feature variants unearthed arcana lets you re-roll a spell attack with two sorcery points making your chaos bolt even more chaotic if you want a spell that just never misses we can grab magic missile from the first level it deals 1d4 plus one force damage each and they can't miss unless someone casts the shield spell then they automatically miss but then you made them use a first level spell slot so it all balances out actually since you can fire them at multiple targets you could use that slot and still hit two other people so it's not balanced take that thanos that's what you get for killing my boyfriend 
11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells. Disintegrate forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 10d6 plus 40 force damage to those that fail. This drops them to 0, you don't have to worry about them rolling a death save because they instantly turn to dust. This spell's damage is absolutely insane, but if they make the dexterity save, it deals no damage and you're out of 6th level spell slot. So bend luck around them, you really want to make sure that they fail that save. 12th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement or a feat, and now that we've capped all of our spells, we'll grab the lucky feat. This gives you three luck die you can use to reroll an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, or you could use this to manipulate an enemy attacking you to give them disadvantage. Obviously, this will help you make sure that all of your dreams come true and everyone you care about is safe and sound forever. 13th level sorcerers can learn 7th level spells. Plane Shift lets you kick someone out of your reality with a melee spell attack and a failed charisma save on their end. It's their job to get back. If you'd rather take a field trip with your eight closest friends to another plane that's also an option grab nat hawkeye cap vision ant-man sleepy happy and doc damn it i keep doing dwarves 14th level wild magic sorcerers get controlled chaos meaning that when you roll on the wild magic surge table you roll twice and choose the option you prefer there's way more good and neutral stuff on there than bad so this can help you get a beard of feathers on your face that goes away when you sneeze that's the best option obviously 15th level sorcerers can learn 8th level spells. Earthquake creates a whole bunch of chaos. It turns a 100 foot radius circle on the ground into difficult terrain. Forces constitution saves on casters in the area. Forces dexterity saves on everyone in the area, knocking them prone if they fail. It opens 1d6 fissures that are 1d10 times 10 feet deep, 10 feet wide, and cut across the whole area. Creatures standing on those spaces make a dexterity save or fall in. Buildings on those spaces collapse, forcing dexterity saves on creatures within half the distance of the building's height, dealing 5d6 bludgeoning damage to them if they fail and burying them in rubble until they can make a dc 20 strength check on their turn all other buildings take 50 bludgeoning damage and collapse if that destroys them so your dm has to know the hp of their buildings it lasts for up to a minute depending on your concentration most of the avengers can fly and the ones that can't are pretty good at deck saves so this should be a great way to take out a ton of chitari 16th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement let's grab some more dexterity so you don't get hit as often you're pretty nimble all things considered 17th level sorcerers can learn 9th level spells wish is the single most holy cow what is happening spell in the book it can duplicate the effects of any spell of 8th level or lower create a non-magical object worth 25,000 gold fully heal up to 20 creatures and remove effects on them like it's greater restoration give 10 creatures resistance to a type of damage you choose give 10 creatures immunity to a spell or a magical effect for eight hours remake reality by forcing a re-roll of a roll that happened in the last round and those are just the safe options if you want to get unsafe you can wish for anything but reality doesn't like to get messed with meaning the dm could totally screw you over you also take 1d10 times the spell's level for every spell you cast after this your strength score drops to three for a 2d4 days and there's a one in three chance you can just never cast this spell again so be careful when you're making a new reality all i'm saying you can also learn our last meta magic ability i'll take the extended spell to make your hold persons or earthquake last a little bit longer it doubles the duration of a spell 18th level wild magic sorcerers get spell bombardment meaning that when you roll max damage on the die for one of the spells you're casting you can roll an extra die and add that to the damage once per turn it's not quite as good as some of the other subclass abilities as the most you could possibly do is add 12 damage but a little extra oomph never hurts and it doesn't cost any sorcery points or anything so it's not bad 19 level sorcerers get our last ability score improvement if you want to take hits grab constitution if you don't want to take hits take dexterity i'm gonna go with dexterity since you don't have proficiency with the saving throws and wanda is more quick than she is thick our capstone is the 20th level of sorcerer letting you recover four sorcery points every short rest it's not much but if you're willing to take some time off it could be the difference between life and death now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, Chaos. You control Chaos with ways to affect roles and warp reality to your will. That's pretty good. You're also great at controlling other people or making them lose control with confusion and hold spells to make sure that your enemy isn't doing what they want to. Finally, you've got mobility options to fly like a plane and you can travel to other planes so you can always go where you want to go. For weaknesses, your magical damage isn't actually all that high with Disintegrate from the 6th level being your best option for putting the hurt on and Nimble Foes can avoid it altogether. You're also lacking wisdom, and you know firsthand how good Hold Person is, so you know firsthand how bad it would be if someone used it on you. Finally, you're rocking a lot of concentration spells. While your saves for that are pretty great, you can still only have one up at a time. But maybe you just wish for the ability to hold two spells at a time. It might not go well, but you can give it a try. Just be prepared for when the chaos doesn't work out in your favor. It could leave your vision slightly impaired. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. Next week is Final Fantasy week, so I hope y'all like Final Fantasy VII because you're getting a bunch of it.